Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to cover weeks five through six in Delta training. So I'm going to take you through the journey of what we did during these weeks, the workload to consider, and some tips along the way. Now, please keep in mind that I was a Delta flight attendant from 2017 to 2018. So it's been a good six years since I was in training and some things might have changed. So feel free to use this video as an idea of what to expect but don't expect my experience to be the exact same as yours. So for those of you who don't know me, hi, my name is Cassandra. I am a certified flight instructor. Before that, I briefly worked on the line for Delta Airlines as a flight attendant. So this channel is all about the world of aviation, whether you're interested in becoming a flight attendant, a pilot, or you're just interested in the aviation industry in general. Welcome. This channel is for you, and I'm so glad that you're here. Now let's get into it. Okay, so weeks five through six. Now we wore our training uniforms to class half of the time and our business attire the other half of the time. Our training uniform is typically black solid slacks and solid white dress shirts, um, along with our Delta jacket, right? And of course we need our lanyard. Our Delta handbook goes into depth of what these styles exactly are and which are approved to wear, which are not. Same with business attire, and it's what you would imagine. Now, business attire, you have a lot more free reign. It's kind of like dressing for a job interview. Very conservative dress. Um, you can use business suits, you can wear slacks, um, but once you get into training, you'll be able to read your handbook and you should be good. Everything is laid out for you perfectly. Now, week five. Monday and Tuesday, we covered the first three aircraft in our fleet at Delta. During my time, we had the MD-88, or the Mad Dog. We had the MD-90 and the 717, which is a Boeing. So we had to cover the schematics of each aircraft, like exit locations, locations of other equipment, how to operate that equipment, categorize zones, etc. These aircraft aren't super crazy to start out with, but there are more of them that you'll need to learn moving forward in weeks six and seven, which will be more comprehensive because there will be different versions of them. Also keep in mind that the fleet has changed since I've been with Delta. For instance, they retired the MDs, so the MD-88 and the MD-90. On Wednesday of week five, we had our online assessments for the MDs and the 717 due, so what we had covered. And then we began covering domestic customer service. Now domestic for us means within the United States, of course, right? So we're departing and arriving within the same country, but for the sake of our training, the standards of service included Latin America and the Caribbean. So these three regions will observe similar practices in terms of items offered, for instance, very similar services. Our customer service training included attitude and hospitality standards required in order to be an excellent flight attendant, the different services and meals offered or provided, right? Depending on which flights. And fun fact, when you're booking a flight and you're curious about the service, we don't go by flight time, we go by miles. So if you have, let's say like an hour flight, depending on how many miles you've tracked, this flight will determine whether you receive a choice of Biscoff cookies and pretzels and either coffee or water as a drink or one of those two snacks and a choice of any drink from the normal bev carts if you're in main cabin, right? And main cabin, if you're not sure what that means, it's just economy, that's all it is. So buying the cheapest ticket to get to where you need to go and back, nothing crazy, no extra amenities, that kind of thing. Now we also learned how to read a departure report. So the information required to know before our flight, like the food that will be offered, right? That we covered. The special assistance roster, so this includes people who need wheelchairs, just assistance in general, minors for instance, which hotel we will be staying at and their phone numbers, all that information, flight time, any employees who are jump seating, etc. As well as how to operate our sky pros. So our iPhones that we have that we just swipe with credit cards to sell various items, liquor, snacks, meals, etc. We were trained on how to troubleshoot 
with customers or passengers. So if the passenger is unhappy with their experience and something kind of goes wrong, we try to figure out how to best remedy the situation for them. We can actually go into our Sky Pros and assess the situation and, and give the passenger what is most appropriate given the inconvenience for them. All right, so on Friday, our domestic customer service assessments were due and our midterm evaluation began. So everything we've learned so far, all the ground training that we've done, the pre-work from our modules, right? Before we even entered training for Delta Airlines, we had to do this pre-work with all those modules, right? Emergency management, medical, security, the MD-88, 90, 717, all the schematics. We reviewed all those to prepare us for the actual midterms that would be the following week. And we'll talk about that later on as well. Saturday and Sunday of week five were blocked off for different, what we call OE flights. And all this means is that you're going on these flights, actual flights with actual flight attendants who work for Delta, and you're getting a feel for what to expect with this career, right? You can ask these flight attendants any questions. I personally went with a group of two other people on Saturday. They're really sweet and goofy humans. We just did a turn, which means that we touched down at our destination airport. In this case, we went from Atlanta headquarters, right, to Buffalo, waited for the aircraft to get cleaned, restocked, and we rechecked the aircraft. Then we headed back to our home airport. So for us, we went from Atlanta, of course, where Delta's headquartered. We touched down at Buffalo, and then we headed back. Now, the way that this kind of looked for our OE flight, right, it's an introductory flight, is we took off, waited until we were stabilized, and then the crew called us back to observe what they were doing. So arranging the carts, putting everything together, the Bev cards, the snacks, all that stuff. So we were just shadowing them to get a feel for what was going on. They put us on the Bev carts, so we were pouring drinks, and that's when I figured out that Diet Coke takes a really long time to settle when we're at 30,000 feet in the air, when we pour it. It was a great time getting to experience the flow and the ins and outs of what it takes to be a flight attendant. So after we got all of our questions in and returned back to Atlanta, we took a shuttle back to our hotel where we were staying. And frankly, for me, I just studied the rest of the weekend for the midterms because that was coming up in week six which is a perfect segue for what we did on Monday. So for week six on Monday, we reported for our uniform distribution appointments and we did not have class. So the entire day, minus trying on our uniforms to make sure everything was good, we didn't have class. Now, when I tried mine on, it was pretty loose because I lost about 15 pounds. And that was because I was so busy during training we were so busy that I only ate when I was hungry. And obviously the chemicals in your brain and your body, when you fast or go a long period of time without eating, this changes your sensitivity to insulin and ghrelin. So my body became more in tune with when it needed to eat and when it didn't. So I needed to get my uniform altered because of this, but they are very fast. And by Wednesday of the following week, the alterations were taken care of. So for the rest of the week, we wore our training uniform. And on Tuesday of week six, we had our midterms. So on Monday of week six, we had our uniform distribution appointments, right? And on Tuesday, we had our midterms. Now for our midterms, our section, the way that this would go, is our section was brought to a computer lab in the morning where we logged on, um, the testing window was brought up, and we were also given an option to take earplugs. So when we're testing, if you're really sensitive to sound, you can use these and it would be less of a distraction while you're being tested. They do offer this every single time you go into a computer lab to take an exam with Delta. So once everything was situated, we waited for our teacher to tell us that the time was beginning. And once we began the exam, there was a timer in the corner for us to check how much time that we had left. Now we were required to get at least a 90% on this midterm. There were 50 questions, so five 
zero questions we had to answer and we had one hour and 30 minutes to complete this. And if you were wondering, it was multiple choice. We were not allowed to use any materials for reference, so this was not an open book. We had to use solely our memory, so making sure that we had all of our ducks in a row, cognitively speaking. And we also had three attempts to pass this midterm. The first fail would result in taking it again whenever schedules lined up for the company and for you. The second fail meant that you had to take it the following class day and the third fail resulted in being removed from training. Now, I only know of one person or maybe two who ever really had to retake these exams more than once. So it's very abnormal for anyone to fail out during these exams. As long as you really apply yourself and do the best that you can, your instructors want you to succeed and they'll do as much as they can to help you, especially if they know that you're really trying and can see that. So after those were taken care of, we began setting the rest of Delta's predominantly Boeing fleet, which included the 737s, 757s, 767s, 777s, and the Bombardier's CS-100. Now this time around, as I forewarned earlier, it was very comprehensive and there were different variations of these models. For instance, there were six different variations of the 767 model aircraft with the same memorization expectations as before. So within the schematics, everything that we had to learn looking at each variation. So we had the 767-300, also known as the 76-Papa, P for Papa, the 767-300 Echo Romeo, which is also known as the 76-Lima, 767-300 ER, 76-Tango, 767-300ER, 76-Zulu with the four-door, and 76-Zulu six-door, as well as 76-Delta. So all these variations. And the same goes for the 777. Now, of course, the fleet is a bit different these days, right? More Airbuses have been added as well, but now you have an idea of what to expect and how much work is really needed to study these aircraft. On Saturday during week six, we reported at 6 a.m. per usual, you know, our normal class time that we were assigned. My class was assigned. We were still in our training uniform, but jeans were approved for today to kind of make it a little more casual because it was a weekend. The reason we had to come in on Saturday is because we had to complete an assessment for each aircraft that we learned every single day of week six, which meant that Monday, as you remember, it was free, minus the uniform distribution. Tuesday, we took our midterm, and after that we learned about the 737 for the rest of class. So then on Wednesday, we had to complete our module about the 737s, and then for the rest of class, we learned about the 757s. Thursday, we had to complete our module about the 757s, and learned about the 767s. Friday, we had to complete our module for the 767s and learned about the 777. So then on Saturday, right, we have to fit it in. We have to complete our module about the 777s and learn about our CS100, our Bombardier. And Monday of week seven was the Bombardier, the CS100. That was when the assessment was due. But we'll get into more of what happens in week seven and week eight in the next video. So that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you found it useful, entertaining, informative, etc. If you did, feel free to give it a thumbs up so I know that you enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.